My Street Dog family, you hear that theme song and you know it's time for another edition of Street Talk and time for me to bid you a very pleasant night, St. Kitts and Nevis, and a very pleasant night to the entire Eastern Caribbean region. And I should say greetings to the entire world because we are on the World Wide Web. We're reaching you, some of you in Africa, there's some of you in Asia, there's some of you in Europe, and there are a whole lot of you all over North America. So I'm at liberty to say uh, good night. I can say good morning, and I will say good afternoon, because one of such greetings will be applicable to the region in which you find yourselves. Uh, My trade dog family... Uh, just for the first timers, and I want to thank all who continue uh, to share the link because when you do so, we get first timers. And I want to welcome our first timers and hope and trust it would not be your last time. And just to let you know as well that Straight Talk is a public service program that facilitates and promotes free expression on all issues of national interest, be they legal, be they environmental, be they technological, social, economic, and or political issues on Straight Talk, we do have a forum to express yourselves freely. Uh, Let's, in the process, strive to get St. Kitts back to that end, St. Kitts and Nevis, that should be back to that enviable position of being number one or one of the freest countries in the entire world. On this program, we try to raise the level of national consciousness. We try to raise uh, the level of national discourse by alerting our people to their rights, to their responsibilities, and certainly to their obligations. My name is Ian Patches Lybird, and I give Almighty God thanks for blessing me with yet another opportunity uh, to join you in conversation my street dog family on yet another occasion and as your host I will continue to pledge by always I will always pledge to remain I should say an untiring advocate of truthfulness and I'm always reminded by the words I'm always reminded by the words of 
a very famous hymn of mine, and an excerpt goes something like this. We are all called to be God's prophets, speaking for the truth and right, St standing firm for godly justice, bringing evil things to light. So let us seek the courage needed, our high calling to fulfill, that we may all know the blessing of the doing of God's will. So my straight dog family, welcome again. And uh, as I would always remind you as well, that straight talk is not about sensationalism. We are not about creating excitement. Neither are we going to just get e e e e e exaggerated at the expense of accuracy because we always lean on the facts, my street dog family. We lean on the facts because I consider it my bounden duty. Hear me. I consider it my bounden duty to always present what I call the unvarnished truth, the plain truth, my straight dog family, and especially when it comes to good governance in my country. And I want to remind you as well of our paid program also being streamed live on Massive Vibes Radio. And also send the links. A straight talk is on Amazon or Alexa devices, so you can get us there as well, uh, my straight talk family. And welcome again to you, wherever you are. We are joined all across the Federation. We are joined, in fact, all around the world, in particular, our diaspora. And, you know, some we, we, we have met, some we know, others we have not, and we may never, ever meet, but some will agree, some will disagree. But that's what diversity is all about. But please, let us not ever become disagreeable. So let's all thank Almighty God, nonetheless, for helping us to understand that it is good and it is pleasant for brethren to dwell together in unity. Let us hope and pray for the day when we will all sing, all sing his praise together. So welcome again, my people. And thanks for those who share the link. As you bring first timers, please continue to do so. And I must also inform my first timers that Straight Talk is a participative program. By that I mean we include your calls and we do include your emails. If you're so minded calling, the numbers are on your screen. They are six six three six six seven two. That's the local number, and the overseas line is 646-829-6672. There are those who like what I call the cloak of anonymity, as I call it. We give you access, therefore, via our email platform, and the address is Straight Talk Patches. That's one word. It's on your screen as well. One word, Straight Talk Patches at gmail.com. And a special welcome to my junior brigade. I always start with the youth. They are our leaders of tomorrow. So we ensure that they are as well tuned in and getting abreast of what's happening. And as I said, we are live on, on uh, Massive Vibes Radio for those of you who have the Alexa app. And... Let me say hello to young Dwayne, to Tristan, Shamar, Kevin, and Rook Costa over there in South Carolina. Jamal in Anguilla, Travis, I haven't seen you for some time, I haven't seen you for the week. Travon as well upon the extension, and that special lady, I must always hail that special lady, who I told her, I'm keeping you hanging, no doubt. But we'll meet sooner, sooner rather than later. And on a sad note tonight, my street dog family, I learned today of the passing of my friend, my good friend, Sean, Captain 
handbill as most people uh, would call him. And, you know, I really had to, to say, uh, continue saying that we have to, to live life and be good in life because we never know when we'll meet our demise. Because uh, Sean was always a cool guy, you know, always so friendly, always so approachable. And now he's just gone to the great beyond and we extend our sympathy, our condolences to his entire family, to the division community and his uh, aviation community as well. And may his soul rest in eternal peace. But always remember, my straight dog family, that death is a process. We also have our observations in review, following which we move into our dissertation, or a short thesis, I normally call it. And the title of my thesis, or short dissertation tonight, is The Untold Story About Water Development in St. Kitts. A lot have been said about water, but a lot have not been said as well. And some things have just passed us, and we don't even recognize, because... You know, water is not a a sexy topic, I would say, so the media don't pick it up as it ought to. And in fact, water is life, you know. But we will get that back into that tonight because there's an untold story, as I said, about water development in St. Kitts and Nevis, I should say. And our observations and review are an integral part of straight talk after which we move into our thesis. It's a time when we highlight the current issues, my street dog family, we ask questions, and we, uh, in fact, try to establish what has changed, what can be expected, and what new we have learned as a people. We have been hearing about the rough times ahead, uh, as a result of the failing of our our CBI program in terms of feeling in terms of the leadership or lack thereof. But our first observation, though, I bring you good news, my street dog family, because over a week ago, just about, well, going on to a week, just about six days ago, we heard of the missing 84-year-old Ada, of Sandy Point, and the good news is that she was found alive and well. But we must commend the search party, really. Uh, we must commend them for their efforts. Uh, we understand the dogs went from that that uh, that school. We understand they also assisted the fire brigade and other officers and other emergency officers and that's good news that 84 year old Ada was found and alive we must say and well I also saw some news that emanated from the People's Action Movement PAM which suggested or suggests to me or to us that Pam is still around and have recently elected new lead hers. I like that one, lead hers. Uh, you know, there's a woman will lead us one day. And Pam ha- have elected the uh, new lead hers to the executive of the People's Action Movement National Women's Group, the NWH. NWG, what am I saying? Uh, were elected uh, sometime, I think it was last week, Thursday. And we do congratulate this new executive, which comprises of Vanessa. How are you, Vanessa? Chair. Johanna Marsham, Deputy Chair. Hazel Webster, Secretary. Merle, namesake, Library, the Treasurer. Colin Henry Morton, Assistant Treasurer. Sobian Phipps, 
public relations officer. And this is refreshing news, I believe, my straight dog family, as at times it seems as though this July administration does not accept that having an effective opposition is in everybody's interest, even that of the government. So it's good to see the People's Action Movement uh, getting up and running and, you know, how important women are in the political arena. So congratulations, Vanessa, and your new team. And those are my observations in review for tonight, my Street Dog family. As I want to move right into my thesis, which I said uh, I have titled The Untold Story About Water Development in St. Kitts Nevis. And although I state St. Kitts Nevis, my focus will be on St. Kitts as most of the data from Nevis is uh, uh, most times difficult to interpret and furthermore, information coming from the state, Brantley, is usually unreliable, to say the least. We can say, however, that water outage is not unique to St. Kitts. It's not unique to St. Kitts Because of the NIA release just yesterday, this release came yesterday in relation to the what is called the Water Outage Advisory in respect of the physical closure today of three public schools in the parishes of St. John and St. George in Nevis. So my straight dog family, we are experiencing drought conditions still around the Caribbean and here in St. Kitts and Nevis. As a matter of fact, here in St. Kitts, our point of departure for tonight takes us back some 68 years ago in 1956 when a young man from Newtown here in East Bassett named Stanley Sebastian was transferred from the health department where he served as field technician in the public health sector to take up the post of water engineer as nobody else, it was said, could be found to fill the vacancy. The late Stanley Sebastian was the brother of the late Sir Cuthbert Sebastian, believe it or not. And remember his mom, Mrs. Richardson, we went to, those of us from the Newtown area, went to Miss Richardson's Sunday school every Sunday afternoon. And Stanley Sebastian served the Water Services Department until his death in June of 1969. But some 69 years thereafter, Sebastian's legacy still lives on as it was under his leadership. The water main line from Wingfield River and Stonefoot after Tobacity was laid. Back then, approximately one million gallons of water per day was piped to Bassetty, and this effectively prevented water shortages. And except in times when the island experienced serious drought conditions. And speaking about drought conditions, the entire Caribbean region, I could recall, experienced a deep and prolonged drought that started in 2015 and lasted into mid-2017. 
I will call in Puerto Rico, in Jamaica, for days at times they had no water. In Barbados, there were issues. And right here in St. Kitts, the drought was characterized by historic low annual rainfall totals in 2015 and 2016. We had 24 and 35 inches respectively. Much lower than the long-term annual average of 55 inches. In 2015, we had over a 50% deficit in rainfall. But the Team Unity Administration, through its Water Services Department, respond, responded to these low inflows and neglig negligible recharge of aquifers by instituting an island-wide rationing program in August 2015. The department simultaneously embarked on system improvement projects to increase redundancy in some systems and diversify sources of water in communities that were most critically affected. I can recall the $600,000 water system upgrade in the Mansion Phillips Molyneux Lodge area. A $200,000 upgrade in the Saddlers area and the commissioning of a new well in the Wingfield Old Road area at the cost of some $150,000. But yes, we were forced into rationing hours from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. daily. Rationing is continued, though soon after in 2016 in Old Road or from Old Road to Atlas via St. Paul's in August and St. Peter's, Keon and Keys in October 2016. But let us fast track my street dog family. Let us fast track to 2024. And if we take a look at the Karikov drought outlook as at today and projected for the end of May 2024. And these are figures collated through the CIMH, the Caribbean Institution of Meteor Meteorology and Hydrogeology. But we can see though that from these figures that uh, we will have some relief here in St. Kitts and Nevis because in terms of the projected uh, drought we are not listed uh, thank God in this, for this period up to May 2024 and we can Glean, as I said, from the standardized precipitation index outlook, which it, 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 our forms of precipitation include rain, snow, and hail, for example. And precipitation occurs when a portion of the atmosphere becomes saturated with water vapor when temperature reaches 100% relative humidity. But those are the technical issues. We are not dealing with the technical issues tonight. But according to another stalwart water engineer, Athel Rollins, who is still with us, who served the department, the water services department with distinction for over 20 years and more, I believe. And let I believe as well, it was a CEDA-funded water improvement project that included the drilling of underground wells all around St. Kitts. Arthur Rollins, however, gave high praise to his predecessor, Dr. Christmas, Dr. Joseph Christmas, whom he referred to as the architect of improved water services in the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. Christmas, who served as the manager and water engineer 
of the Water Services Department from 1972 to 1977, was also credited for writing the Master Plan for Water Development in St. Kitts and Nevis, and for realizing very early that groundwater was the future of water development in St. Kitts and Nevis. And there are, we are told, several untapped natural resources that the government is aware of, and such information derived from detailed hydrogeological analyses of St. Kitts's aquifers done over several years in the past. I'm always cautious nonetheless, because just like the surface water sources or resources, so to the underground aquifers are recharged from rainfall. Water percolates highly porous soil. A plethora of data were accumulated in respect of geophysical, hydrogeological, and geological findings by many experts. What still must be done, however, is to identify prospective well sites to facilitate the necessary drilling. And there is an MER technique multi-electrode electricity resistivity, as it's called, which was developed by Ocean Earth Technology. Unfortunately, that company is quite familiar with the situation in St. Kitts, having done work here as part of the UNDP Jeff-funded Bastia Valley Aquifer Project under the Douglas Labor Administration in 2007. As a matter of fact, there is a report that the current manager and water engineer, Cromwell Williams, is quite familiar with, as he was the focal point for this Bastia Valley Aquifer project. And this report outlines the MER techniques, or technique, that was used in the said project and can also be used to ensure that precise drilling targets are identified once the most promising areas have already been determined. But this report, my sweet dog family, contains a strong recommendation to move the wells in the aquifer well field to the north of the airport because of its, the findings as it relates to salt water intrusion. Yes, that report from 2009 spoke to salt water intrusion in the wells, as you can glean from the information on your screen, which tells us, my street dog family, that because of this constant withdrawals for over 50 years or nigh 50 years, my street dog family, the wells or the, the, the well field has been subject to sea level rise and with that came salt water intrusion. But the incompetent minister then, Asim Walters Martin, did absolutely nothing to address and implement these recommendations. Ironically, my street dog family, the current manager and water engineer, Cromwell Williams, worked within that department for 12 years from 2001 to 2013 before going to the public works department. He's back now for the last three years, as of April 2021. So he therefore knows how long they have been drawing down on these wells in the Bastia Valley Aquifer well field. And for over 50 years now, Cromwell will confirm, my straight talk family, over 50 long years we've been drawing down from those wells. If, if you look at 
some of the wells we have in Bastia, they have been pumping since 1970s, 50 years, since in the 1970s. And that is quite remarkable that we have wells that we have been operating for 50 years now. Well, we have, we've been operating those wells for 50 years. But the recommendations in the Water Management Resource Plan stipulated that, yes, you've been pumping those wells for 50 years. Yes, we have a, a sea level rise. And yes, we have salt water intrusion. So those wells should be relocated north of the airport. It's clear. It's clear in the report. But the last well that was drilled under the Douglas Labor Administration with Asim Martin at the helm in public infrastructure was in 2003. 12 years and not one well was drilled. The amount of water available for public consumption was not increased in 12 years under the former Labor Administration. If that was not bad enough, my street dog family, if that was not bad enough, millions of dollars, millions, I said, of dollars was spent on this desalination plant. A 1.5 million gallon desalination plant, my street dog family, which remained idle and rotted at the valley under labor for seven, eight, or nine years by the Dog family. And we also understand that permission was granted to the hotel to cannibalize the plant. But lo and behold, lo and behold, my Street Dog family, weeks before the 2015 elections, Mysteriously, a U.S. $4 million contract was signed with Bead. Yes, my street dog family, weeks before the 2015 election, this contract was signed with Bead, dated the 8th of February 2015. And remember, elections were the... 15th of February 2015. And my street dog family, you ask yourselves, oh, is that a coincidence? Was that, as July would say, an elections easily bought? But no. There was not a scintilla of evidence, my street, or doubt, rather, my street dog family. Because when you read the contract and you look at the project scope as well, my street dog family, examine the project scope as well, and you will see, my street dog family, that it was signed, well, first of all, the contract was signed by then Permanent Secretary, I can get back to that, then Permanent Secretary Ricky Lake, as you see, it was actually signed on the 8th of February. But going back to the project scope, my street dog family, and the project scope was, is very clear as from the contract, taken from the contract. He said the project includes oil, all exploration, drilling, and capital works, including development and construction of production, treatment, and delivery facilities and other operation and maintenance costs for the extraction of 2 million imperial gallons of potable water per day from aquifers to agreed points in the government's distribution or transmission system. The contract for the sum of U.S. $4 million dollars that's the over $10 million, my street dog family. And is originally of 12 months 
duration, one year. So then by 2016, you would anticipate that they would have found the water and the contract would have ended. It was envisaged by Straight Dog family that a three-year maintenance contract in the sum of $400,000 per year based on abstraction, which was part of a primary contract is, and was never finalized. It was also envisaged, envisaged that if Bede was successful, this would provide an adequate supply of potable water for the next five to ten years. My sweet dog family, the current disposition as at September 2015 is pellucid. But there was not one scintilla of doubt that Bead was in breach of its contract 2016, 2017, and 2018. Not one drop of water was found but they received two million easy dollars. And that figure sounds familiar, I'm sure. Then suddenly, Bede found two wells under 400 feet in contravention of the contract. Shadwell 1 and Shadwell 2. Shadwell 2, my straight dog family, I've said before, and the base repeating is still capped. It is nigh six years now. And that well is still capped because of the arsenic contamination found in that well. <clears throat> but Bede has friends. Or Bede friends and associates, I should say, had friends. And I was told that in business... You deal with people you know and people who know you. And this is one of the lessons I've learned from this bead agreement. He has friends in Nevis and friends in St. Kitts. But finally, my straight dog family, I wish to spend some time on two issues nonetheless. One, water quality. And two, desalination. And whenever I touch the issue of bead and water quality, there's a certain louse from Keon who spent most of his life out of St. Kitts Nevis. And now he's back home and he continues to write his nonsense on Facebook. I know many of you call me and tell me that I should answer him and tell him about living in some basement. But I will not stoop to that level, my street dog family. The most that I'm prepared to say though is that I have lived in St. Kitts Nevis all my life and me ain't going nowhere to use colloquial language. I am not going nowhere but also I am not going to stop using my voice in this country. You know I can still sing. I'm not trying to be boasting. Just stating the fact. But nowadays I use my voice to talk. And when I talk about water quality. That threatens his percentage of the 20% available to his partner. But for those who call me. Let me reassure you. That it is not that I am afraid of this loudmouth self-acclaimed mayor of Cairn. But my grandmother, Eunice Proctor Taylor, is from Keon. Yes, we know the Proctors, if you are a Keonite. But growing up as young boys, we were all taught that empty vessels make the most noise. So why argue with someone of this caliber? No, you don't, my straight dog family. And the late Sir Llewellyn Moore told me that one day. For me, I apply the Mark Twain theory because it 
emphasizes the importance of choosing your battles wisely and avoiding unnecessary conflict. So we are not going there with the loudmouth guy. We are going to focus and stay focused on the quality of the water found in Kion. Because in summary, water quality impacts our health. Water quality impacts our well-being. Water quality impacts our overall development. So ensuring clean water is not only a practical necessity, but a fundamental human right. But what is troubling my straight talk family is there are many aspiring leaders amongst us who believe that they are above scrutiny. But if we are going to ensure a resilient democracy, then there must be public accountability. In the European Union, for example, there is what is called a drinking water directive that is enshrined in legislation. And this drinking water directive requires all EU member states to submit a report on the quality of water for human consumption every three years. Three years, every three years. The obligation to report covers certain water supply zones. Zones that supply more than 1,000 cubic meters of drinking water per day or serve more than 5,000 persons. Here in St. Nevis, Straight Talk is therefore calling for clear, ambiguous drinking water legislation. Let us revise the Inadequate Water Courses Act of 1955. Yes, there, has been, there have been several amendments over the years, but this legislation is still outdated. It is about high time that we here in St. Kitts and Nevis and all over the world, wherever you are, it is time we understand that water is food. Imagine this government, my straight dog family, is still transporting water in construction trucks and the fire trucks. Don't we understand that drinking water is the number one food item? Yes, it is. Because in addition to drinking and food preparation, it is used for domestic purposes, just, such as washing your clothes and taking your shower, your bath, as some people say. So this administration, the July administration, must therefore ensure that drinking water satisfies stringent quality requirements. In the European Union, the Drinking Water Ordinance, which has transposed the 2020 European Commission Drinking Water Directive into national law, specifies these binding requirements. In most, its most basic provisions include the drinking water must not only be free from unsafe levels of substances and pathogens, but that it must also be pure and wholesome. Moreover, the drinking water legislation regulates the duties incumbent on the water suppliers and monitoring authorities. It specifies the microbiological, chemical, and radiological parameters that must be tested for and the frequency with which drinking water must be monitored. To also ensure the water's hygienic safety, the ordinance stipulates that limited values and water quality requirements must be met in household taps. My straight dog family, water quality is essential for the survival and health of all living species, including humans, animals, and plants. Improve water supply 
sanitation and effective water resource management can contribute significantly to economic growth by straight dog family. And hear this. In 2010, the United Nations General Assembly, UNGA, explicitly recognized the human right to water and sanitation. Everyone, it stated, deserves sufficient, continuous, safe, acceptable, physically accessible, and affordable water for personal and domestic use. And what about the Sustainable Development Goals, the SDGs? Sustainable Development Goal Target 6.1 aims for universal and equitable access to safe and affordable drinking water. The indicator for tracking progress is safely managed drinking water services. So my straight dog family, we are not going to stop talking about water quality until we get answers about the cairn water that was found. Imagine the manager and water engineer Kwame Williams of the Water Services Department, my straight dog family, when asked, when asked about the Cairn well, he again failed to address the issue. And you wonder why he continues to fail to address the issue of water quality. Hear this, my sweet dog family. I know that you were doing some exploration in Kayon as well, and uh, you found, you were able to found, to locate a source of water within a well. So tell us about that. That project is not um, 100% completed. What happened after they completed the, the drilling of the well, they would have um, done what we call the pump testing because you have to now put in a pump and test the well to see how much, what is the maximum sustainable yield. The pump that they used, that they had, was too small to, to establish that maximum safe, sustainable yield. They have now brought in a larger pump so they now have to do over the pump test. That is the, this, this stage we are at at this point. Um, they still have to establish the, what is that, that maximum yield that we will be able to pump the well at, and not just for a year or two, but for a very long time. Mm -hmm. Imagine that, my Shizok family. Not one word about the water quality. Important to the manager and water engineer it's a safe yield, sustainable yield, he said. But on the issue of quality as well, I am sure, and listen to me carefully, I am sure that many of us are not aware that this July and the soccer engineer, Congress, and the manager and water engineer, Kwame William knows as well because he was the director of public works. And they put a halt to the replacement of miles of asbestos pipes that are used to distribute water in St. Kitts. You hear me? They put a halt to the replacement of miles of asbestos pipes that are used to distribute water in St. Kitts Nevis. In this, the 21st century, my sweet dog family. And this project started under my watch as Minister of Public Infrastructure. When we were doing the Island Main Road rehabilitation, it was, it was thought prudent that we'll move the pipes from under the road and place them on the verges to the side of the road. Simply because it avoids 
the water service department, and not just the water, all the utilities, utilities we should say, electricity and cable and telephone. They've spent millions of dollars on this road. So while allow them to go and dig up the roads, we decided to get all the utilities together and agree to move the roads to the side. The, the, the lines rather to the sides or the verges and then we recognize that we had pipes laid from nigh 40 and 50 years asbestos pipes and we said no these have to go and we started my street dog family the St. Kitts Water Services Department is upgrading existing pipelines in St. Paul's during an interview at St. Paul's on July 20th, Assistant Water Engineer at the St. Kitts Water Services Department, Ryan Phillip, said, quote, the Water Services Department, in partnership with Surrey Paving, is undertaking a project to replace existing cast iron pipelines and replacing them with PVC material that is more durable and hopefully can last longer than the current ones. He said the Water Services Department is undertaking this project at this time, because Surrey Paving is in the process of renovating the island main road. This infrastructural upgrade was first highlighted by the former Minister of Public Infrastructure, Ian Patches Lybird, who stated in Parliament last year that, quote, in today's world, we should not have asbestos pipes transmitting water. As such, the government replaced approximately 12 kilometers of asbestos pipes and estimated to spend another $6.2 million to address another eight miles of asbestos pipes that lie under the island main road. So why have they stopped this project? Why has this local engineer, Congress, the Prime Minister July, who is a doctor, The manager of water engineer, why have they stopped the removal of asbestos pipes that still transmit water in this country? And I said again, I'll say again, my sweet dog family, we need this revised legislation to cover in particular the issues of quality. Because the Water Courses Act is so vague. Yes, you have appointed a board, so-called engineer, a water board. That's because you want to hide behind the board to increase the cost of the product. But finally, my straight dog family, desalination. And July and his cabinet broke ground for this Abu Dhabi UA, UAE government funded desalination plan to be constructed and commissioned by Mazda and that was signed since 2019 yours truly signed the document my straight dog family witnessed by Dr. Bertil Brown, our energy officer. So why it took so long, my street dog family, to implement this project? We know the snake, Mark Brantley, tried to hijack it as well, my street dog family. So government is continuous. So why are they trying to own this project, my street dog family, only heaven knows. The soccer engineer as well also raised the issue of a contract given to Royal Utility without following the procurement guidelines. And this is contrary, my straight dog family, to public policy. So I am questioning whether this contract will be enforceable. as it violates the general principles of public policy. And the next administration should just acquire the plant in the name of the people without paying 
one cent for it. That's my suggestion because this is not a valid contract that the soccer engineer has told us about. My Street Talk family, you recognize, you said they evaluated three contracts, but you only told us about one. But who the hell are the other two that submitted or were asked to submit or were requested proposals? Who are the other two? So this agreement opposes public policy and the law and must be considered void and of no effect, my street dog family. What is the cause of this desalination plant? Why is that a secret, Soka engineer? But more importantly, this contract of this agreement with Royal Utilities would cause injury to the people in this country. It's not ideal, Soka Engineer. If you know that corner of Newton Bay, in that corner there's heavy metal, arsenic contamination, petrochemicals from all those ships that pump their fuel, their diesel, whatever the product they bring into those tanks. There's petrochemicals, oil is charged from the tankers in the port. So why that location is ideal? No, it's not. But this agreement, my straight dog family, seems to be less with corruption and big lies no doubt was right because when you look at the methods of procurement my students of family it is very clear the methods of procurement are clear my students of family it says a procurement shall be made by one of the following methods of solicitation tender which shall be done by either comp Competitive seal bids or by competitive seal proposals. Sole source procurement. Emergency procurement or by competitive quotations. My straight talk family. It can't be a sole source procurement. It can't be an emergency either. Because next door in Antigua and Barbuda. They have about five or six desalination plants. The BVI, Curacao, who are about to join CARICOM, they have been using desalination water for over 50 years. The competence are in these islands. So why no intergovernmental collaboration? Why don't you ask Prime Minister Gaston Brown, July, to give you some assistance, some advice on desalination. We understand, even though you are hiding it, we understand the cost for this desalination plant is US $30 million. Why no private sector input? Why? My sweet dog family, are questions we ask. 
basically a contract or an act is thought to be contrary to public policy if it results in a breach of law it harms citizens or causes injury to the state but my straight talk family it is also against the public good but what I found interesting my straight talk family is the manager and water engineer has asked for a blank check my straight talk family the manager and water engineer wants a blank check. The government has its role to play. The government must invest in water. And part of the reason why we are where we are today in having to ration water is because the government over the years have not invested enough, did not invest enough in water. Persons tend to think that, oh, water, what's, what's there to invest? What's there to spend? Build some tanks, run some pipes. How much then that, that costs? That is not so. business of managing water and developing our water sector is very costly. Tens of millions of dollars must be invested in water if we're going to come out of this deficit situation, this rationing situation that we're in right now. We have to spend our way out of it. You know, I remember back in the day when we had electricity problems, I used to say they were giving the electricity manager then a blank check and somebody needs to write me a blank check forced to get out of this water problem because we're not going to get out of it without spending some serious money. Hmm. The manager and water engineer wants a blank check. My street talk family, we understand that this desalination plant will cost US $30 million. Nothing has been said about the cost. Why is this a secret? But I want to conclude my thesis tonight, my street dog family. Nothing has been said also about the quality, the water quality. And I want to submit tonight that if the water quality won't kill us, then the increased costs that are going to come even before Manager Water Engineer Cromwell gets his blank check, my street dog family. But July and his cabinet are silent. If the water quality won't kill us, then the Cost of the impending increase on water rates will. But July and his cabinet are silent. But my straight dog family, rough times are ahead. As this or there is. And this is the untold story about water development in St. Kitts. That's my story tonight, my straight dog family, and I am not going to change it. I'm going to include your calls and your emails. I always like to implore you, though, that when I go to the lines, I do so anytime now. I anticipate that you will respect others, and of course, to achieve that, you must first respect yourselves. Let us try to be fair to all concerned, and let us try to build goodwill and better friendship. Let us ensure that the things we say will be beneficial to all concerned. And in the process of saying and doing those things, let us strive to build a kinder, gentler St. Kitts and Nevis. With that said, I go to the lines and say, Caller, you're live. Hello, Caller. Good night. Good night, my dear. No, last week, a caller and a radio station was saying a minister of government living in a government house and getting allowance. If that is true, we are their integrity and make so much a noise over it. But if Best Timothy and his family, they wanted to get at, but Best Timothy don't take them on. They could never be like you and will never be like you. Let the integrity come up in the meeting in the house. 
can be tomorrow first and let us stand up to the joy road and the and the the joy road and the when they going away everything that everything that Timothy leave to fix let them fix it and claim after because they going full speed again and they going want to set them do it have a good night have a good night as well right there we go that the line sounds like Alice in Wonderland as we go back to the lines uh and say good night on my overseas line call you live hello caller it's a good evening how are you oh, i am peaceful and yourself what can i say so far so good all is well it's good to hear you again tonight so i just want to let you know all is well just got to do what you got to do wife my brother Good to hear as well. From another mother. That so I just true. want to hear look, my friend the um culture in in in, in floods and my wonderful, lovely Texas Queen and St. Louis. Louis. We're gonna see you man, just Good give us you. some time. It's alright. Yeah. Mr. Chetap, I hear I was listening to news this afternoon and I hear something about um some kind of six cents hotel. I think um, some time ago, did Unity them uh, get a contract with um, Six Cents to build a hotel? Six Cents was here sometime, yes, on the Unity. But he didn't say nothing about um, blaming Unity, you know, nothing, but he said, he, he talked, sorrowful, he just says that, um, that, he saw, he think it's, uh, uh, I don't remember if he said he's sorry, but he, he, he was talking that, um, you know, it's another Caribbean oil and get it and this and that. So he shows some things, so I don't know what went down if there was under unity, yeah, because he said it without an opportunity. Who you refer to as he? Who, who, who said that? Who said what? Um, uh, Prime Minister. He was on ZIZ um, with, okay. with something, um, saying something concerning six cents, building a hotel in St. Kitts, but he, something, I, I get the last of it, but he, he, I, that's why I said, well, let me find out for you what really went down with the um, six cents hotel. Because I remember some years time ago, they said six cents is coming and you have to build a hotel, and instead of building St. Kitts, it's building um, Grenada. And he said how much people that he was going to imply and how much he got on um, construction was going to was going to take so much as so much people. So all that was in that I said news tonight. Well, well, most important is for for July to say what is he going to do. Not, not but this is what I'm saying yeah, that, that he is just the attack in yeah. saying what happened to that. Yeah. Yeah, all you have to say, well, listen. Uh, we're gonna do something, but he yeah. ain't saying that. He just, he just was in in a sorry. He was talking there. He like he missed out on an an opportunity. <laughs> that won't. That yes, won't reduce uh, the cost. Yes, um, it's, uh, it's under it's, it's under news. You if you listen it tomorrow no, at no, seven p.m. No, I won't. I won't listen. Waste time to listen to that because what. I know. That, that that's put, that's uh, why I'm here. Um, that's why yeah, I'm here yeah, to well, let you know. Good. What he needs to tell us uh, how the poor people gonna put put a uh, 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 food in the kitchen to cook for their children. That's what he needs to tell us. Okay. Uh, my brother, I don't know, but uh, okay. thank you for a great opportunity was to elect, um, you know, but because what thank you is going through shouldn't be going through. That's true. Okay. So, but you know, the people, people say so they want change, and you have to when you see the biggest change I will get in America <laughs> that a whole year, a whole was a was a big mistake they make to elect Mr. Biden. Boy, me because look a whole year and our um our one k nobody get no interest instead of making money eh, we are millions of people lose money millions because nothing was happening so I same thing going on with thank it right now that is a big mistake they think it's back but hey you're gonna have to so far and pay the consequence. Yeah, Mr. Well, Shetak, I just want to say thank you for everything you are doing and let me just heal up my brother there 
in Bellevue and my wonderful nephew, George Reed. I just want to wish them the best, you know, and take care of themselves. Mr. Straight Up, we all appreciate what you are doing. So just continue to do what you are doing. God bless you. See you when I see you. Take see care. You, God bless you as well. Uh, let's go back to the lines and thank this caller. We apologize for the quality of that sound there, but let's go back to the lines. Good well, night, Mr. Babel. How are you, Mr. Bibleman? You're batting Well, um, um when I call, this Bibleman is all right here, okay. and and this Bibleman have the word of God to to preach and to to think. That is so. I want to tell you something, right? Mm-hmm. That what happened presently now? When I read the word of God, I get more knowledge, knowledge with you. Here's Psalm 52. Verse 1. Why boast up thyself in thy mischief, O mighty God, O mighty man? The goodness of God endured forever continually. Mm-hmm. Thy tongue this 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 is your mystery, mystery. Like a sharp razor working deceitful. Number three, you love evil. You ain't say you know. You love evil more than good. You hear that, that is? Mm-hmm. And they lay down than to speak righteousness. The lowest are the, the perfect. Words of words O thou deceitful tongue. Verse number five chapter two, um, verse chapter five God G-O-D, God, shall likewise destroy thee forever. He shall take thee away and pluck thee out of, the, out of thy dwelling place and root thee. Out of the land of your living would be out of the land of the living. Now, verse number six. The righteous also shall shall see and fear. And laugh, to laugh at him. Now that six words, Patrick. Mister Patrick. So. John James. Yes, sir. Is saying the Bible man. The Bible man ain't got no problem. I am dealing with the word of God. And who want to come up against me? Let them come. Because no matter what you debate, I put God on it. I mean, I had to go out with nothing. I am saying it tonight, my brother. If they believe the want to call me down and do all that, I demand God to run deal, not John James. Okay. Not the Bible, man. Listen here. Okay. Over 50 years, 
I believe more than that. I've been saved. I've been washing the blood. I've been. The Holy Ghost is my teacher. I, if they want to know where I, I, born, I, I born in the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, that is my teacher. In um, James, John chapter 1, I believe it's John chapter 1, you know. Okay, okay. Uh, but I the chapter 1 or 2. It says, I will teach you. And I bring things to come. And he said, he need not nobody to teach you. But that when you read the word of God, and the Bible says the word of God, study to show yourself approved. I want my neither to be ashamed. Okay, my brother. Okay. But divide it the word of God. Me ain't got no time to quarrel with nobody. Okay. Me not got no time. All I do, come on the, the word and the, the, the and from your um, day. Okay. And I straight up, because Matthew chapter, this is the last passage of scripture I'm going to say to you. Matthew chapter 28, 19. It's a whole in the world. Jesus sent his disciples. He shall go out into the world, preach the gospel to every living creature, baptize them in the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Okay, my brother, I got you. I got no. you. I got you. I got you. My, uh, I have some calls on the line, so. Yeah, I'm uh, Mr. Patrick. I'm thanks, thanks for your input. Thanks for your spiritual intervention. We, I always look forward to them, okay? I'll finish with them. <laughs> okay, my brother. I'll finish, I tell you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Bible Man. Let's go back to the lines and thank this caller for holding call of your life. Hello, caller? Yes, thank you, Patches. Good night. Thank you for holding as well. Um, good night to all listeners. What is so hard? Okay, let me reiterate. Govern it is said that government is continuous, right? That's true. From one administration to the next. And whatever administration take control from the previous, if there are projects, <laughs> contracts for future development of the country, probably not completed by the previous administration, what is hard if another administration take over? And they look at the contracts. And if it is something worthy for the uh, country, the federation, the islands, what is hard in, in continuing it? I mean, an administration should not play politics with the people because they are working for the people. They came from the people and they should continue the work, continue whatever is good for the country, the infrastructure, whether it is construction, water, and you could name it. Why, why any administration will take ownership of a project? It is the country. It's not just them alone. It is everybody. So what is hard? Why play politics? I mean, you got to be civilized and mature and wise administration. Cut out this territorial grabbing. It's me this, it's me that. It is continuous because you're only there for a time. Whether you might die, whether you might lose, but you all got to think what will be next. You cannot be forever. There are good, better, best. And the best could never come. The best is always yet to come. So why take ownership or anything? When we die, we go six feet deep. Or we go in a cremation. Okay. So why take ownership? Okay, Move on forward and be, 
Be, be, be, be continuous. Be adaptable and adjustable. Thank you. Thank you very much. As usual for your interventions, Mr. Leibold, last week you read two emails. One said that the division ambassadors, envoys, diplomats, emissaries, whatever title you choose, they are synonymous nevertheless, were fired under Dr. Drew. Lie administration. The other email debunked the former, claiming they were not dismissed but resigned. I found it very intriguing and laughable how we are so easily fooled, so gullible, and well satisfied with what we hear. Before conducting a probe, it seems very strange to me that all three of them would resign months after a new government took over, when they were there, all doing excellent work as representatives for the Federation. Let us not forget how malicious and revengeful Dr. July came to office and the silly and absurd statements he Statements he made that he will never sit around a table to have any discussion with Harris. That is the measure of hatred in his heart. He has for his successor and not only for Harris, but for those who Harris appointed to various positions at home and overseas. Maybe you don't know Patches, but when he fired Maynard, the director for Social Security, he frankly told him that he had been too close to Harris. My question is, why would these three division envoys suddenly resign uh, with this email? And even if their resignations are bona fide, couldn't they be replaced with other divisions? There are hundreds of qualified divisions at home and abroad that could have replaced them instead of stockpiling the embassies with petitions only and where the Premier's voice is in all of this iniquity and unfair sheer dealings for Nevis. All of us recall the incredible high praises Brantley showered on Harris when he appointed the visions to the dip diplomatic corps and at the same time condemned Simmons and Pam, Douglas and Labour for failing to appoint one division as ambassador. He was thrilled and overwhelmed with enthusiasm and went on to say that never again will the visions be left out of the di diplomatic corps. All praise to Dr. Timothy Harris reads this email. It's 9.25, my straight dog family. As we go back to the lines and I'm trying to just juggle with the emails uh, callers so I trust you'll understand. And we had just, if you're just joining us, beg your pardon, uh, then we welcome you. And just to inform you that our thesis for tonight, um, we are looking, we are examining the untold story of water development in St. Kitts. Call your life. Good evening, Dr. The great Ian Patches. Just call me servant, my brother. You could study with that. Just call me servant. <laughs> I cannot wear your hat and your jacket. I'm giving them to you while you're alive. Goodbye. Good night, brother. Sorry. Good night, brother. Straight talk and all the listeners to this program. Patches, I have some wonderful friends who say morning culture every, every morning to the alarm and to Patches, nothing else. They don't even want to hear. Your telephone ringing or they don't answer it like me. And they are VG, M O M E, sorry, Mango in, in Atlanta, and Shady Boxer, and what's your name? The Pilot Samuel, special extra, extra pilot, and Gene Foy of Monkey Hill. They all listen attentively and they don't miss it. Anyway, Patrick, let me go here tonight. 
Let me deal with the issues of this country here. Now, I like what you say about up the town. We all know about up there. From the factory pier come right down, that ocean up there is contaminated for years. I like the heavy metal we going down in there from that, that oil, oil um, bulk station in your town. Mm-hmm. Mr. Boston, Calypsonian who can't finish his song, the only thing he like to get up and finish is tomorrow, point of order, point of order. And he point them break off. He has no point. Anytime Dr. Harris gets out to speak, point of order, point of order. Even if Dr. Harris cough, that, that old mumu engineer who knows nothing about water can say point of order. I told him last week on this program, the best place to put any desalination plant to pull water in the country is over on the Atlantic side of the ocean. Over there is not contaminated like the Caribbean Sea up your tongue. But you see what happened to he? He's up boasting, show self, and want to say he and his leader, Dr. Lion July, doing everything different because team unity, team unity never did nothing in seven years said Joe that lying man from Monkey Hill look at your patches what you have done in the little five years you were in there if them they happen to be in there where they are now it will take them 25 years to do two of the things that you have done when you were there when it comes to water always always sad laws the little pipe that they had over there Everybody in Sadlers had problems to get water. A fella tell me that when he go be the man in time to walk and other people sleeping, when water supposed to be highly pressured in the pipe, he got to lean up on the wall to get water come out of the pipe to be in. And when you went in there, you increase the size of the pipe and everybody now in Sadlers getting water. Thank God for patches when you were there in Team Unity. Even though some people don't like to hear the word Team Unity, they're still hanging on by the destroyer, the demolisher of a good thing, which was Team Unity Administration, giving people the $500 to feed them. Now we look at it. They take, they say they're going to give 15 and they reduce the five, and no 15 come. Look who, take, look who it takes out to help to feed the hungry people who are starving, who do not have... $2 to buy a bread and cheese. You take a little village man named Chico with his own initiative to go around and feed people in sink it without any pay. And then they're going in the top. What they're going to do good? They can a government of transparency and a government, um, a government with, who, who, who give public information to the public. They're not doing that. Okay, my brother. They're not doing that. I'll be back. John James, they said a lot of things about Jesus. Don't abuse and mind that. You continue to do like Jesus. Thank you very much. I'll be back. Thank you very much as well, my street dog family. Yes, we upgraded uh, the mansion, Philip Molly Lodge area, also in Saddlers. Yes, I do recall that. Colo, I want to thank you for holding your life. Hello, Colo. Yeah, Mr. Lago, man, how you doing tonight, man? I am peaceful. Yourself? Yeah, pretty good, pretty good. Um, you know, let me let me start with the um the fact that my colleague up in New York mentioned that um government is continuous. Mm-hmm. Yeah, great great point by him there, and um, you know, I guess um he wants to see, you know, whenever one administration goes in, the next one comes in. He just want to see the projects continued on That's true. for the betterment of the country. That's how we should be. Yeah, man. Um, concerning bead, bead is like a mystery. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Bead is working on one side of the federation and then not working on the other side. I don't know what's up with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, like you said, man, what are these guys intention are just to be extracting money or extracting water? But money. My, 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 suggestion, my suggestion is that 
when time come to open up that that well there in you said that well was um they found they said they found water in Kion, right? Yes, yes. So we're told. Yeah, well, what I what I what I'll encourage you, Patches, is not to worry too much about the, the quality of the water. Why not? Well what I want you to do is just put out the bulletin and make sure that these top officials get the first water out that well and make a nice toast and see if they're gonna drink that first water coming out of there. <laughs> <laughs> All, right? All right. So don't don't worry too much, man. No, normally they like they like the photo ups. So when 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 it's time to open up that well, man, and let that water flow, I hope that I hope they they got the champagne glass or the, the you know what I'm saying. They could get up. They help. They got their nice water glasses, man. They could go up there and make that that first toast. Uh-huh. You know, let's see who's gonna fall down first from the the bad quality or good quality. Uh-huh. But anyway, man, for me personally, right now tonight, I just want to put in a plug on encourage the young persons in the federation to get involved with the, their political affairs you know i want to i want to i want to see some term limits you know going to law there to limit the recycled politicians mm-hmm. you know one 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 favorite caller there in the federation he has a, a mantra we keep voting them out and voting them out until we get what they want change the change you know that that, that, that can <laughs> yeah change and change until you get the change you want right yeah, yeah. <laughs> That can that can that can become a natural term limitation. You know what I'm saying? If, they, <laughs> if they're not going in the parliament to really pass term limits in there, the people can really execute that on their own. True. You know, you just vote them out, man, accordingly as as you see necessary. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Mm-hmm. And and then maybe lastly, man, you know, uh, me personally, I have an idea about. You know, recently I've been trying to look out for the Haitians. You know what I'm saying? And I, I, I personally came up with the idea of trying to meet the, some Haitians into the Federation. You know, nobody's really trying to help the Haitians then. But for me, I would uh, I would uh, move away from that CARICOM movement and maybe target the Haitians now and help them out in the time of need. You know, nobody might want to really hear what I'm saying about this, but this is a real thing. Um, since I brought up this idea, it's been a lot of chatter about the population of St. Kitts and Nevis being down, especially I know on the Nevis side, they need they need they need help on that side. They need to boost up. Mm-hmm. You know, the last today, like today, and you know, last week there at the end of the week, they had some conversation about increasing the population, and I see an opportunity of working with the Haitians right now because of the situation they're on the ground in Haiti right now. You know, my my thing is. They could have meted some Haitians in legally, put a cap on it so as to increase the population. And once we get the population boosted up, then definitely the economy is going to boost up as well. So that's the idea that I came up with. And it's not a favorable idea, but it's an idea that can work for the Federation. Once we get the population boosted up, then definitely it'll be more foods to eat, more, more, more mouths to feed, sorry, more mouths to feed. And once we get that population increased, the economy definitely will get boosted up. And that's what my intention will be. And I'll leave it there for now, man. All right? And, you know, you have a good night, bro. Have a good night as well. Thanks always for your contribution. Um, uh, so what about the strain on your health sector, the strain on your education sector, crime issues like that uh, ought to be considered as well? I've heard that discussion but we'll have a discussion on this uh, CSME this uh, free movement uh, unrestricted access someone is not telling the truth Mr. Eli X today on issues read this email you asked the host a very pertinent topical and rhetorical question what they say about the fish the host very gladly said he does not Remember, a laugh, then return the said question to you instantly. Said, me no remember. Either. Certain Miss X, the host, knew exactly where you were going with the question. So with alacrity, he absolved himself and forwarded it back to you. It was very intriguing that the question was posed, fallen, and the exasperated callers uh, mirroring 
their dissatisfaction with the government. Well, Mr. X, this is what they say about a fish. When a fish stinks, it stinks from the head. Reads this email. This other email reads, Mr. McMahon, you realize why people would not like you? Well, because you have certain tenets that you stand by, one of which is to mirror and display objectivity which you did this morning. I believe many people wholeheartedly agreed with what you articulated this morning on Zelizet's Edge program with the host, Devon Cornelius. For him to suck stoops his teeth at a caller who gave his opinion on the free movement of CARICOM nationals, in my opinion, was rude, disrespectful, insulting, outrageous, and reprehensible. This guy... His memory is very short. Just the other day he was talking about the rudeness that some employers exhibit in the government offices to the public. And was going then, was giving them sound advice how to conduct themselves. But the first, he first needed to do an introspection of, of himself when Mrs. Henry and Mrs. Mrs. Franks called his program to tell him the correct thing is he rudely dismissed them, for he knows it all because he is the brightest. I'm sure he has no knowledge of who Mrs. Franks is. He's just singing uh, for his supper. Read this other email at 9.38. Take this other email. Well, the political, financial, and unfair share for Nevis will never, never cease until we introduce the green paper in place of strife, that was proposed by the late diminutive legal luminary Lee Moore, presented to the citizens in 1983. The Green Paper suggested a government for Nevis and one for St. Kitts. Each government will manage their own affairs. There will be no need to intervene into each other's business. No enmity or animosity with one another. The family friendship and relationship will be in, ex, inexorable for first trade and travel, etc., as it exists now. A brilliant idea by one of the world's brightest scholars. Little Anguilla was tied with us and had no other alternative but to utilize force to gain their independence from St. Kitts, Nevis. Instead of force, sought a constitutional trajectory, secession. Section 113, which although has not yet been implemented, but also irremovable, look how well Anguilla has developed and progressing big time, incrementally. It has transcended Nevis by far and working assiduously to surpass St. Kitts. Mr. Prime Minister, instead of focusing on what has developed and progressing big time, incrementally, it has transcended by far... I'm here, Mr. Mr. Prime Minister, beg your pardon, instead of focusing on becoming a republic for your own egotism, consider giving Nevis full autonomy by adhering to Sir Limo's Green Paper initiative. The best way forward for the two islands reads this email. This other email. Good night, Patches. How come? No one talking about the $1,000 July say he will give to the children the people need to know, concerned parent. Yes, my Shadok family, it's now 29 minutes. What am I saying? It's 19 minutes before the 10 o'clock hour. As we are now on the upper side of 10 o'clock, if you, are just, if you have just joined me, beg your pardon, then we looked for tonight as the untold story of water development in St. Kitts and Nevis. We focus on St. Kitts, obviously, and we want to say as well, because someone just mentioned it, that we are not saying that 
the water found is good, neither are we, are we saying it is bad. But shouldn't there be some transparency? Shouldn't the country be told that the water was quality tested by Bead or by whoever? We understand that Bead did his own testing. We should be also told why is the Bureau of Standards that has the equipment and have tested 27 or 28 wells. Why hasn't the Bureau of Standards been contacted? That's another question, my straight dog family. Water is a serious matter. And we must, must, underline must. We derive water from two sources, surface and from groundwater, wells. I believe there should be one more well uh, added to be 29 wells, but I'm here reporting 29. But my Sri Lanka family, in St. Kitts, the story is untold about water development in St. Kitts. But the issue of quality is what comes to the fore each time we talk. Each time I go around my straight dog family, every time we raise the issue of quality, and it's a pertinent issue, and they ought to be addressed. We raise the issue of quality in the context of those asbestos pipes, which we were trying to replace, or we started to replace on the team, our team unity administration. Why this project was stopped? The country needs to know why was this project stopped. The St. Kitts Water Services Department is upgrading existing pipelines in St. Paul's. During an interview at St. Paul's on July 20th, Assistant Water Engineer at the St. Kitts Water Services Department, Ryan Phillip, said, quote, the Water Services Department, in partnership with Surrey Paving, is undertaking a project to replace existing cast iron pipelines and replacing them with PVC material that is more durable and hopefully can last longer than the current ones. He said the Water Services Department is undertaking this project at this time because Surrey Paving is in the process of renovating the island main road. This infrastructural upgrade was first highlighted by the former Minister of Public Infrastructure, Ian Patches Lybird, who stated in Parliament last year that, quote, in today's world, we should not have asbestos pipes transmitting water. As such, the government replaced approximately 12 kilometers of asbestos pipes and estimated to spend another $6.2 million to address another eight miles of asbestos pipes that lie under the island main road. So why have they stopped this project and keep transmitting water by asbestos pipes in the 21st century? Carlo, thank you for holding your life. Yes, Pat, it's a pleasure. Good evening to you. How are you? I am peaceful, my dear. What about yourself? Well, I'm excellent. I'm excellent. Yes. I can see your dimples. My, th <laughs> my thing is tonight. I don't know how, how many people realize that King Liar Every figure's garden in Amosa in government. And every time he go away, he get a position. He just said one day, I think a Friday when he just said he went to Guyana or what not, to was um some security of what he for the for the um for the thing or what not. So what I try eh? The RSS chairmanship. Right, 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 to get that. Mm -hmm. I noticed since he gone in, only he one look like he get everything. I want to know if uh, he buying them position there, are uh, he paying for them? 
and what's not because you look bad at that. He don't got get chairmanship for over there. And he got social security, I mean, he got security here. And he can control them wire. He can manage wire. But he going overseas, go control somebody else one. Something is not fitting at all with that guy idea. We, when we had these, um, the real prime ministers, them, they never get nothing so far like a heat. And now that he is the fake one, every minute he gets in, every time he go, if he go to Jamaica, he gets us, us to go up there. If he go to Barbados, he gets something. If he go to Guyana, he gets something. Everywhere, everywhere he go, he gets something. I he buying well, those things, like how they buy in the, <sighs> the, uh, the, the kingdom, they get for the people, they must then say the, Oh, shit. Elections, but the positions <laughs> are, positions are normally rotated. The the chairmanships are rotated based. I don't know if it's a, a six month rotation. I'm not sure. I'll have to check it. But uh, and based on yeah, the, he, alphabetical order, it comes it comes up. I think he got that. He getting it real fast. He getting it faster than the real prime minister than we used to be in India. If he's six months, he getting real real easily where he go. He gets it, you know. And the next thing, I listen to, I mean, Jamaica National Assembly the other day. I do not know when it was, but yesterday when I come from church, I on the TV, and I was watching Caribbean news. And I see the in the House of Assembly. And the opposition and the government, they had an uproar in the locate. All the bulldogs and start to bark it right there. Mm. And the opposition must be said something about that. Do not go see the speaker or what not. And the government people them get upset. And they turn out. They, the government turn out, leave the opposition in the house and gone. And I hear what the gentleman said. It's 14 of them, and you're supposed to be 16, but only 14. So whatever, they must be couldn't get the position. And the next thing they say, the Speaker of the House must be an independent speaker. Not one who have the mouth in the trap and getting nothing under the table. That's what I heard. So I would really like to know, this opposition what we have here, there is opposition. I would like to know if there is no law that he cannot pay back all the money that he gets for opposition, because he ain't working for us, you know. Mm. If you ever hear he go in the house and do a say another thing to represent the opposition, all what he do, he works for Board of our feathers all slap together. That's what he's working for. He's working for us. So I will let you know if there is no law that he can pay back the money what he say he's working for opposition and he know he ain't working for us. But he, you have a pleasant night. Have a pleasant night as well. Right there. Very interesting uh, perspective, you know, because he have uh, no opposition. I want to congratulate the new PAM female executive on their recent appointment or election and look forward for to see them in action. My advice to them is to avoid Mark Brantley and to embrace Timothy Harris, meaning avoid the abuse of each other and work in collaboration, uh, in a collab- collaborative effort, beg your pardon, as opposition parties and focus on the incumbent government ineffectiveness, their frequent troubles, their vindictiveness, and their non performance. That must be your focus. And as I say, run away as fast as you can from that snake. Read that email. Let's go back to the lines, call your life. Yeah, parties. Yeah, I love what that email that you just read out there about Pam. 
Because, you know, every time I call in on the program, I ask all the sailors on the ship, all hands on deck, and whatsoever it takes for the betterment of the country and the survival of the citizens without starvation. Every man, every sailor on the ship, take up an oar and oar the boat off the reef because this long pocket concern full of us administration that we got led by King Lawyer July. All the concern, the only thing they're, they're doing good in there for themselves is full up the pocket and go up on plane. And the amount of time they fly out, they don't got what you call a, they don't pile up enough hours now so they could get a free, a free flight. Now, Pat, is when you all were in there, you all had plans to raise Cranston Gut when you come out to Newton Gong. Raise it about the road, look how you all did the one over wash cut in Kayan. So when you got heavy rain in the mountain, people from Newton Gong go back. They can pass and come straight to Sandy Point. And they, 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 before they put some the money and continue the plans that the farm administration had and, and finish the job, Jogan in there with vengeance, hatred, malice, everything that is bad that the boy will say is bad. That is what he was operating on. Because I remember when he became the leader of the Labour Party, even though he abused up Dr. Douglas, disrespect Dr. Douglas to get that position, Mrs. Henry said to him on a radio talk show, the best thing for him to do, he is inexperienced and he is young in age, and um, she thinks he should sit down with Dr. Harris, at the time Dr. Harris was Prime Minister still, and get some experience because Dr. Harris would not mind giving him some experience. Who need help, he will give them. Because even look at these patches. Some people do Dr. Harris some wickedness, robbery, and he said, Oh, bother them, man. Leave them to God. So why, do, why should Dr. Harris hold back any, any um, experience, education from him? You know what he said? I, we did we, we toy talking like little boys pitching marble. I, I have nothing to do with, with, with Dr. Harris, Mr. Harris. I don't want to have nothing to do with him. You can tell me somebody going to be a leader of a country and you don't want to have nothing to do with the present leader of the country. What that tells you? The man is a devil. He's full of Satan. And anybody got Satan in them, they will think wicked of other people. It's only people who got Christ in them. And when they remember what Christ went through for us, they will put away the wickedness, the hatred, the Taliban behavior. Okay. That man, do you follow what you are leave back? They break down the grammar school building, start to walk it down. Up to now, what happened in there? What happened up there? Nothing. Okay, my brother. And if you are the... Eh? I, was, I was trying to get some other calls in, so... Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, Patrick, and uh, I won't go now. If you are to continue... The new school, a lot of people would have been walking. Good night, Patches. Good night. Have a good night until later on in the week. Thank you very much, my dear brother, for your contribution as usual. And as we wind on, I perhaps take uh, two more calls, but as we wrap, my street dog family, I focus specifically tonight on water quality and desalination and whenever I touch the issue of bead and water quality many get upset and we never say that the water was bad we never said that the water was good what we want to know is when they are going to speak to the water quality test and tell us my street dog family who tested the water when it was tested and what were the results of the test because just a few days ago 
the manager of water engineer was asked about the can well and all he t- spoke to was pump testing. He never spoke to quality. And that's very strange. I know that you were doing some exploration in Kayon as well and uh, you found, you were able to found, to locate a source of water within a well. So tell us about that. That project is not um, 100% completed. What happened after they completed the, the drilling of the well, they would have um, done what we call the pump testing because you have to now put in a pump and test the well to see how much, what is the maximum sustainable yield. The pump that they used, that they had, was too small to, to establish that maximum safe sustainable yield. They have now brought in a larger pump, so they now have to do over the pump test. That is the, this, this stage we are at at this point. Um, they still have to establish the what is that that maximum yield that we will be able to pump the well at, and not just for a year or two, but for a very long time. Mm-hmm. And yes, the sustainable yield is important, but so too is the quality of the water found, because in summary. Water quality impacts our health. It impacts our well-being and overall development. Ensuring clean water is not only a practical necessity, but a fundamental human right. So what is troubling my straight dog family is there are many aspiring leaders in this country who believe that they are above scrutiny. Why doesn't this soccer engineer and the prime minister tell us about the water engineer? About the water quality, beg your pardon. Because if we are going to ensure a resilient democracy, then there must be public accountability. And I made the point earlier about the European Union that have what they call a drinking water directive that is enshrined in legislation. And it is about time. It is about time here in St. Kitts and Nevis we get rid of this unambiguous drinking water legislation. We need to revise our own legislation, the Water Courses Act, which is inadequate, even with all the amendments over the years, it still remains outdated. It is about high time that we here in St. Kitts and Nevis and all over the world, wherever you are, it is about time we understood that water is food. How can we have this government transporting water in construction truck tanks and the fire truck don't we understand that drinking water is the number one food item in addition to drinking and food preparation water is used for domestic purposes this administration must therefore ensure that drinking water satisfies stringent quality requirements In the European Union, the Drinking Water Ordinance, which has transposed the 2020 European Commission Drinking Water Directive into national law, specifies these binding requirements. Why can't we bring our own water laws, or water law that is, up to speed? Most basic provisions include drinking water must not only be free from unsafe levels of substances and pathogens, but that it must also be pure and wholesome. My street dog family must ensure the water's hygienic safety. Water quality is essential for the survival and health of all species, animals, plants, and of course, human beings. My street dog family, improve water supply, sanitation, and effective water resource management 
contribute significantly to economic growth. It is a human right. to have water and sanitation. And my sweet dog family, we are not going to stop talking about water quality and we get, until we get answers. The soccer engineer must tell the people when was the water quality tested and who tested it and why not the Bureau of Standards being involved. The Bureau of Standards test. 27 of your 28 wells. Is it because the Bureau of Standards found Shadwell 2 having a cynic contamination? Get the Bureau of Standards involved. Soka engineer. Get them involved. But my straight dog family as well, with the issue of quality, this administration put a cessation, they put a halt to the replacement of miles of asbestos pipes that are still being used to distribute water in St. Kitts. Imagine that, my short dog family, a project we started years ago. The St. Kitts Water Services Department is upgrading existing pipelines in St. Paul's. During an interview at St. Paul's on July 20th, Assistant Water Engineer at the St. Kitts Water Services Department, Ryan Phillip, said, quote, The Water Services Department, in partnership with Surrey Paving, is undertaking a project to replace existing cast iron pipelines and replacing them with PVC material that is more durable and hopefully can last longer than the current ones. He said the Water Services Department is undertaking this project at this time because Surrey Paving is in the process of renovating the island main road. This infrastructural upgrade was first highlighted by the former Minister of Public Infrastructure, Ian Patches Lybird, who stated in Parliament last year that, quote, in today's world, we should not have asbestos pipes transmitting water. As such, the government replaced approximately 12 kilometers of asbestos pipes and estimated to spend another $6.2 million to address another eight miles of asbestos pipes that lie under the island main road. When is this going to be implemented, manager and water engineer? Why have you put a stop to the replacement of these asbestos pipes? And finally... Desalination. We know that July and his cabinet told a lie that broke ground for the Abu Dhabi United Arab Emirates government funded desalination plant to be constructed, which was commissioned by Straight Dog Family. Commissioned, or will, which will be commissioned, beg your pardon, and constructed by Mazda, a company from the UAE. Why they try to claim this? Only heaven knows, my straight dog family. Because this agreement was signed by your humble servant since in 2019. So why are they trying to claim this? The Soka engineer as well Raise the contract issue given to royal utilities, my straight dog family. The Attorney General's office has confirmed that the contract oh. agreement for the new desalination plant is just about ready for sign off. And so we should be signing that contract very shortly for the construction of the two million gallon desalination, desalination plant, which is proposed to be located on the industrial site where the Texaco bulk facility used. Storage as 
He evaluated three proposals by Street Dog family. So why are the other two who submitted proposals, why is this a secret? He only told us about royal utilities. Who are the other two? And what is the cost of this desalination plant? And the area is not ideal, so engineer. You probably don't know the obviously don't know the area. It's an area that's contaminated with heavy metal. There must be a cynic contamination. Petrochemicals, as oil was discharged or continue to be discharged from tankers that come into port literally every week, my street dog family. That area cannot be ideal, so called engineer. It is contaminated. But the contract is contrary to public policy. It breaches the law. It harms citizens and will cause injury as well as my street dog family. It is also against the public good. Although Although the manager and water engineer was bold in his request and wants a blank check. A blank check to do what? Cromwell Williams. The government has its role to play. The government must invest in water. And part of the reason why we are where we are today in having to ration water is because the government over the years have not invested enough. Did not invest enough in water. Persons tend to think that Oh, water? What's, what's there to invest? What's there to spend? Build some tanks, run some pipes. How much then does that cost? That is not so. business of managing water and developing our water sector is very costly. Tens of millions of dollars must be invested in water if we're going to come out of this deficit situation, this rationing situation that we're in right now. We have to spend our way out of it. You know, I remember back in the day when we had electricity problems, I used to say they were giving the electricity manager then a blank check and somebody needs to write me a blank check for us to get out of this water problem because we're not going to get out of it without spending some serious money. Well, a blank check. You understand that the desalination plant will cost the government 30 million US dollars. The soccer engineer, the manager water engineer, and July have all been silent on the cost of the desalination plant. Yet they talk about transparency, yet they talk about freedom of information. Yet they talk about good governance. Don't be fooled, my street dog family. Last week, the hard-hitting radical culture reads this email. Ask the journalist host of the program on the edge a simple question, and it became so ambivalent that he just couldn't answer, but evaded the question. The question posed to the host was, was Devon, do you think it is right for someone to be collecting housing allowance from the treasury for his house, but living in a government house? His answer was, let's go to the next caller. Caller, you there? Go ahead with your contribution. He did not touch the question with a 10-foot pole. Dr. Drew has recruited all these so-called journalists and have them placed at every radio station in St. Kitts to forestall, counter, and create damage control for Dr. July. Patch is as simple as the question was, he never answered. Well, Dr. Drew should answer that question himself as well. Mr. Live, on the two occasions you played the tape with Congress, was very soft and not clear. Uh, my straight dog family. Let me play that before I go, so I can satisfy that request. 
If this is the tip you're talking about, my street dog family. Well, the cost of the desalination plant is not our business. As he, he asks the questions, never provide the answers. Who are the other two proposals they examine? Is that our business? And this is a government of transparency. But my straight talk family, the manager and water engineer says he wants a blank check. He says we have to spend our way out of this water shortage issue. But when we spend, or when government spends our money, we have to get it back. And to get it back, we have to increase what we put in. And my street dog family, as July said, there are rough times ahead. Rough times ahead. He make an announcement about the CBI, he promised. But my street dog family, this desalination, we understand the plant is worth $30 million. Why is this a secret? Well, if the water quality won't kill us, my street dog family, coming down the tube, the increase of water cause will but july and his cabinet are silent but my straight talk family rough times are ahead and this is only part of the untold story about water development in st kitts that's my story tonight my straight talk family and i am not going to change it i want to in the process, thank Almighty God for guiding our conversation tonight, as always. I want to thank you, the many listeners. I want to thank all those who sent emails, those who called, and those who just listened. Remember that all of you, you are the ones who make Street Talk. And for that reason, I say a big, big thank you. Until we connect on Thursday for another edition of Straight Talk, be good to yourselves and to all whom you meet. And remember, my Straight Talk family, that whatever your mind conceive, that you will achieve. But first of all, you just got to believe. So when you wake in the morning, thank God for the morning light. Thank Him for taking you through the night. And my Straight Talk family, keep moving on. Bye-bye. Until we connect on Thursday. Have yourselves. A wonderful night. When I wake in the morning, I thank God for the morning light. Give him thanks and praises for taking me safely through the night. For the rest of food and loving care And for my mother's breath of life that's got me here So whatever my mind can see that I will achieve You better believe because I do the things I should Be to my brethren kind and good the best I could so I'll keep moving on I won't stop now I'll keep moving on Till I reach the top somehow Down on my 